Hello, Chameleon Wranglers. Welcome to this wonderful morning. And, well, actually, we need to start by checking out the eggs. All right, these are Brevacorn eggs, and it appears like nothing is going on. And that's the way it is with eggs. You, uh, you just have to keep watching, and then suddenly they explode and there's babies all over the place. So we're just going to keep watching. And as soon as those babies uh, hatch, <laughs> you know, you're going to, you're going to know it when it happens. So, all right. So today we're going to be using the forest edge five plus five method. And I, I've been talking about this. And so let's go ahead and apply it to an actual real world example. This is from a panther chameleon. We actually uh, talked about this particular panther chameleon before, and there is a picture of the little tyke. And so he was in a 30 gallon hex aquarium. Uh, actually it was a terrarium. And so uh, the uh, his keepers decided they were going to upgrade. And so they got this very nice tall hybrid dragon strand cage. And so uh, they, they really <laughs> set it up nicely. And so we're going to go ahead and go through the Forest Edge 5 plus 5 method. And we're going to evaluate every aspect of this uh, cage setup. First of all, Forest Edge. If you remember, the Forest Edge means there is a uh, heavily planted area. And then there is an open area, uh, either on top or to the side, where the chameleon could bask. And if we look at this... Uh, this cage setup, there is obviously a forest edge element, uh, especially a panther chameleon of that size is going to easily be able to get lost in all of those pothos. And so that is an excellent, excellent implementation of the forest edge. And there's a lot of open area on top. Now, part of the forest edge is also there's enough uh, networking branches so the chameleon can uh, take advantage of all areas of the cage. And so with the, uh, in looking at this cage, that's one thing I would say is perhaps have some more of those network branches uh, in the top area. Uh, so the chameleon can use uh, all of that space up there. And on the bottom, the bottom doesn't look like uh, he needs, I mean, you could put some stuff down there. And so, yeah, I'll just say uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, of the network branches. Now I noticed on the bottom that there are some plants sitting down there. I would say remove those. Those aren't doing the chameleon any good. Chameleon's not going to be using them and they're going to be starved for light down there because you have such a, a full foliage floating garden there, which is exactly what your chameleon loves. But that is going to be blocking light to the bottom. And so th there's just really no need to have plants down there. They're, they're just going to die anyway. So take them out, put them, uh, put them somewhere where you can enjoy them. Uh, you've already got the plants, uh, plant structure in here that is going to do wonders for your chameleon. You, you've already got it. You don't need more. Okay. So we've got the, uh, we've done the forest edge and now let's get into our five gradients. First, uh, first we're going to look at is white light. Now, Looking at this picture, it looks like the cage is somewhat bright, but when I bring up the cage top, the only light that I see is the basking light and a shade dweller UVB. And so there's no white light here in the cage. Now it's a little bit deceptive because you can see off of both the heat and the uh, the UVB light, you do see light coming off, and that is in the visible spectrum. Obviously, uh, UVB is not in our visible spectrum, so we're not going to see that. But the, our UVB lights do create some light in the visible spectrum, and so you are getting some there. The thing is that the what's coming off of the UVB light, number one, it's not very strong, and number two, it's not a full spectrum light. Uh, the light that is coming off is just uh, artifacts. Uh, really, the bulb is there for the UVB coming off of that. And so uh, my suggestion, my, my strong advice is to get a, a white light, an LED bar that's really going to light up the area. Uh, what you'll find is these lights here, 
even though the UVB there is going to uh, allow for the D3 synthesis in your chameleon, uh, there is no white light there that's going to feed the plants and uh, help the chameleon be able to see its world. See, chameleons are very visual. We all know this. Uh, and they can see beyond the spectrum that we can see. So even our full spectrum lights actually may not be given the wavelengths the chameleons need to see to the full potential of what they can in the wild. And so I'm going to go ahead and link my favorite LED bar in the, uh, in the uh, description. And so you can go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so let's see, there's white light. The second is heat. Uh, you definitely, you have a great heat lamp there. And if I bring up the, uh, the front view for the cage, you can see that there is a uh, basking branch there. So uh, the, uh, it looks like the heat lamp is shining onto a branch, which is perfect. And, uh, okay. So we'll, we'll check that box and we'll go to UVB. Now, uh, it does look like you have a branch under the UVB. The problem is that that is a 7% shade dweller. Now, you would think that the 7% would be more powerful than the 6%, and unfortunately those numbers are actually, there's a lot of marketing behind that. Uh, it's just not the case. The uh, shade dweller is actually a lower power than the standard uh, Pro T5 6%. Now, I'll go ahead. I just happen to have a shade dweller right here. Uh, it's been burned in for a while, and so I'm going to show you. This is the uh, the progression. This is a solar meter, and um, uh, these are the values. I'm going to show you the values of uh, what's coming off of that light that you've got there. So this is a panther chameleon. So we're looking for a, uh, a UV index of three at uh, the panther chameleon's back. And so you see we get to three, uh, UV index of three, right around three inches under the bulb. And so your basking branch for UVB will need to be set so that your chameleon's back is three inches from the bulb going through that screen because that screen has a 30% filter. So uh, when you're using the shade dweller, you've got to have your, uh, your branch way up there so your chameleon's going to be able to get the UVB that it needs. Now, if you switch that to a uh, 6%, uh, that number is going to be about six inches from the bulb. And then you got to be really careful about uh, your chameleon crawling along the, uh, the top of the cage and exposing its belly to that uh, UVB bulb because 6% is actually pretty, uh, pretty strong. And usually we have to uh, lift the 6% off a couple of inches so the, uh, the UVB that's coming to the top of the cage where the chameleon is sitting there upside down isn't going to be too powerful. That's why we raise it about two to three inches and then the uh, the branch is once again six inches from the bulb now you're going to be doing the math you're going to say oh wait a minute <laughs> that puts my basking branch at the uh, pretty much at the exact same place to where the chameleon's back is three inches from the top of the cage that's true and uh, and so you can keep the shade dweller uh, if you want to, although your uh, UV index at the top of the uh, cage if I go by my readings is UV index of 10. We, we want a UV index of six at the top of the cage. So that's a little bit high, but uh, you can monitor, does your chameleon really crawl on the top of the cage? Hatchlings will do this a lot. Younger chameleons will do this a lot. Uh, chameleons that are not, uh, that, that are not content with their cage will do that a lot. And so watch your little guy and see what is exactly he doing? What do you have to uh, account for? And that also has to do with the uh, the basking light as well. Now, what I've noticed, is there a way for your chameleon to actually get up? It does look like you've got uh, ways for the chameleon get, to get up with these, uh, these little vines. And so you're going to have to uh, be careful about that. Uh, you don't want your chameleon to be walking belly up, upside down uh, under the basking uh, light because even though you have a a good uh, a good it's not a a strong basking uh, light it's uh, it's a good oh, what is it uh, sixty you have it here it is a seventy five watt okay that is kind of powerful but not 
excessively. The thing is, when your chameleon is belly up right under it, uh, there, there can be trouble because chameleons, for whatever reason, don't don't understand this idea that they can burn and they'll just sit there and burn. And so we've got to be really careful <laughs> that we don't give them the opportunity to hurt themselves. I don't know. Nobody's been able to explain why chameleons don't get a, uh, a huge signal saying get out of the heat because you're burning. Uh, there's just something the signals aren't <laughs> uh, just aren't there. So we got to take care of that. So, OK, we did uh, white light. We did heat. We just did UVB. And the next on our list of gradients is the humidity gradient. So we're talking about hydration. And what I see here is that uh, you have got a combination of a fogger and you've got the Arepta rain. So you've got those nozzles coming from the top. Now, uh, so the fog will just, uh, the whole idea of the fog is that it just uh, envelops the cage at night. So where it comes in isn't terribly important. Uh, just do it at night in the early morning when you're chameleon to sleep. Now, the Reptor Rain, that's the one thing uh, that uh, I'm hesitant about. I've used the Reptor Rain once in my life. And w w the problem I had with it is that the water that comes out is more of a spray than a mist. And so you end up, well, you end up having <laughs> a spray. Uh, that isn't necessarily uh, going to mean it's not useful, uh, but make sure... Uh, however it is set up, however it's going, that it's not going to knock your chameleon off the branch. It looks like you've got some pretty good distance, uh, but the spray isn't as fine as something like a Mist King. And so uh, I, I've been very comfortable with the Mist King. I like the Mist King. It's worked well for the community for a long time. Uh, the Reptor Rain uh, usually, uh, well, it, it doesn't match up. But that doesn't mean you have to change it. Take a look at how it's working. Uh, just know that if at any point you say, hey, you know what? We don't need to be blasting uh, the, the, the spray like this. We want a finer mist that there's a, an upgrade is available. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, let me see. Let me, oh, wait a minute. Are you using my bracketed? Come on. I can see Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks like you're using my grommeted. No, that's a grommeted hole. Yes. Everybody on the Dragon Strand cages. This is the Dragon Strand Tall Hybrid. Uh, the You get two hydration mounts that allow you to mount Mist King mist nozzles, but you'll notice there's another hole and it's it's got a grommet on it. And that's actually for quarter inch tubing. So you can have a drip system for your plants and they're using it to uh, have their uh, Reptorain uh, nozzles come out of it. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really happy that people are using that hole because that, that's a special, that's a dragon strand, uh, exclusive. Uh, I put that in there because it's useful for us chameleon people and, uh, dragon strand is the only one that offers it. And so I'm just, I'm just really happy when people use it. So, okay. So we've got the, uh, the hydration and it looks like I mean, it looks like you're going to get some good coverage and it's just going to douse the area. And so uh, I, I think we've got the hydration taken care of. And uh, the, the last gradient is security. And just looking at this, the cage overview, obviously there's no question that this chameleon uh, has as much area that it can be unseen, hidden, and feel safe as it could want. Uh, I think. This chameleon is going to be very happy in this cage. You've got the security grade and taken care of. So good job with that. Uh, now, after the five gradients, we have the five branches. And once again, this doesn't mean that there's just five branches or that there's one branch for each function. It's a function. And we just need to make sure that there's one branch somewhere in the cage that fulfills this function. So the first one is the basking branch. And we uh, discussed this before. There is a branch that's under the basking uh, light. It looks like it's at a good distance away from the basking light. So the heat is not going to be too bad. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be uh, an effective uh, basking uh, 
uh, it looks like it's going to be an effective basking branch. So we're good with that. Now, uh, we did say, uh, because the basking branch also covers UVB, we did say you're going to need to add another branch that's about, what, uh, three inches is UV index three. So say uh, an inch for the chameleon's body. And so you'll need a basking a branch that comes up to about four inches below the top of the cage under the uh, 7% shade dweller. And that way your chameleon is going to get the proper levels of UVB. So basking and the next one is sleeping branch. Now, I can't see into that complete wall of, of plants there. I can, you know, I can uh, try to if I uh, if I zoom in, I can see that there's some uh, vines down there. Uh, but the thing is, I am sure that there are perching areas in that big mess of leaves, and so that, that that's going to be your sleeping branch. Now, as he gets older, you're going to have to evaluate if there's still uh, adequate perching branches within all of those leaves, and uh, and so that's just. That's just what happens when our chameleons grow. We make sure that the branches grow with them. And, uh, and like the, uh, the, uh, the sleeping branch is our most strategically chosen branch. The basking branch is the most strategically placed branch, but the bas uh, but the sleeping branch, we want it to be uh, certain diameters that are comfortable for the chameleon. And that's where they can get their claws halfway around it to all the way around it. And that's a comfortable, uh, that's comfortable diameter, and then we place it horizontally behind a bunch of branches, and you can put in as many sleeping branches as you want. I, I don't just have one. I put four, five uh, to give my chameleon a choice, and what's important is that we set up the chameleon cage the way that most chameleons like it, and then we observe our chameleon, and there's going to be certain personality quirks, and like sleeping. Say uh, you've got one of the not so rare, but uh, uncommon chameleons that like to sleep vertically and they always sleep vertically. Well, okay. So change it up. Just because most chameleons like to sleep horizontally doesn't mean you have to force your chameleon to do that. All of these care guides and these checklists and these structures, these are just to start you off on the right foot. But once you're started off, your chameleon is the expert as to what he likes. Now, obviously, you've got to be clever enough and competent enough at reading chameleon uh, body language to really understand what he's saying. And that's that's another topic that that is a challenge. Uh, and so I've seen a lot of people misinterpret what their chameleons are telling them. Uh, but, you know, that's just part of what we're doing here. OK, next, there is the eating branch. And that's uh, one thing. Uh, really what the eating branch is, just a branch that puts them within tongue distance of wherever the food is going to be. Now, uh, let's see. If I look into here, I see a, a pl green plastic uh, dome thing. Looks like with an opening top right on the hinge side of the cage. And I am guessing that that's the food dish. Possible, possible. But uh, so let's just assume that that's the food dish. And uh, so what we would want to check this item off is that there is a branch nearby enough that uh, the chameleon is going to be able to get at the food. Now, uh, we know that the chameleon is going to be able to walk across all of those uh, plants. And there's some fake uh, vines in there that the chameleon can walk on. Uh, and probably can even walk on that structural, uh, big vertical structural branch there. So that chameleon is down to have no problems uh, accessing that food. Now, what I would do is I would get a, a branch, a thinner branch that's specifically placed so the chameleon can zap the food. The thing is, when you've got live plants and you've got a chameleon that's growing, uh, the plants change position. And the chameleon, because of its change of size, changes where it feels comfortable. And so if you have a, a feeding branch that is in place, that's permanent, not permanent, but you know, you can always change it, but it's there specifically for the food, then you don't have to worry about how things grow. And because everything grows so slowly, you don't notice 
Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, he's, he doesn't have a comfortable place to eat now. So just something to keep in mind. And the last branch is the drinking branch. And that is just a, uh, depending upon your hydration philosophy, that there's a branch where the chameleon can lick water off the leaves or whatever is needed. In this particular case, you've got, as far as I can tell, depending upon how those nozzles are set, uh, you've got good coverage. Uh, I, I am, I am guessing that I'm assuming because of that, you're, you've got pretty much a layer of water throughout the entire uh, top of the cage and of all those plants. And so uh, the chameleon is going to have no problem uh, getting something to drink. So we've taken care of that fourth branch. So overall, we have a very good setup here. The chameleon is going to be very happy. The uh, two or three things that are on the list to, uh, to change is number one, Get yourself some uh, full spectrum white lighting. Uh, I really love the Thrive Ecosystems uh, uh, LED bar, and uh, that's what I use on this uh, this uh, enclosure behind me. And I'm going to link to it in the uh, the uh, description. Uh, so get yourself a an LED white light LED bar. Uh, get a basking branch under the UVB that's four inches below the top of the cage, well, from the bulb, and the bulb happens to be on the top of the cage, and so uh, four inches from the bulb, uh, so the chameleon can get within three inches, which is where you're going to get UV index of three. Uh, and then also uh, put more branches in that, in that space up there. I, I know in some of the things I say, I say you have an open area on top, and then you have a heavily foliaged area in the middle. And I'm realizing people may take that to mean that the entire open uh, open area has to be devoid of everything. What I mean is that uh, the chameleon can find a lot of bright light up there that's not, uh, that's not blocked by leaves. And so there should be uh, branches all over. Um, now you can <laughs> you can uh, discourage your chameleon from climbing on the top of the cage by keeping branches away from the top but as long as you have all these network branches within six inches of the top so they can't reach up there it should be fine and the reason why this is important is because we have just two by two by four foot uh, volume of space for your chameleon to live in and every corner of the cage is a different microclimate and a different gradient. You've got your heat lamp in the uh, the rear right of the cage, which is to our left, and so the uh, the coolest area of the cage will be at the uh, the front uh, left side of the cage, which is to our right at, at the bottom. Uh, but you also have uh, gradients coming towards you towards the front, and so if you give them uh, branches. Uh, then they're able, if you give them branches towards the front, then they're able to get out of the heat, but still be in the bright light. And panther chameleons especially enjoy that kind of thing. And so the more branches you give, the uh, the more options they have. And uh, so uh, it was white light. Uh, get a branch closer to that UVB and add in more networking branches throughout. And then one of the options that's not uh, that not critical would be a dedicated feeding branch, uh, assuming that that green bowl is the feeding bowl. So that is a quick analysis uh, that you're able to do. Anybody's able to do if you just learned the uh, the Forest Edge five plus five. Uh, it's it's really a checklist. It's nothing nothing magic. It's just a simple checklist, and uh, you can use that to evaluate. Uh, any any enclosure, any chameleon cage. So thank you very much for sharing your cage with me and allowing me to share it with my audience. Uh, the, these things are so educational. It, it's one thing for me to be talking about things here, but it really doesn't land and, and, and stick with us unless we're talking about a real world application and this is it. So thank you very much for allowing me to use uh, this this cage here as an example. So this is uh, 
We've got a Dragon Strand Tall Hybrid Cage here. Um, I, I, I suppose we will we'll say uh, that's another part of a hydration is that when they've got the fog coming in, since this is the hybrid cage, it's going to be uh, keeping the fog in. Now, depending upon where you live, if you want to hold more fog in, uh, get some of that uh, that plastic wrap. I have that window insulation, that shrink wrap window insulation, and cover up the bottom uh, flip-up screen door. Uh, so there's just like an inch of screen at the top of that screen door. And that's what I do for the species of chameleons that uh, I have that want high humidity, like my shamrocks that come from a very high humidity area. And so they really like that. Uh, so I blocked off that bottom with just an, uh, an inch strip of screen. And that holds in the fog even more. Okay, so there's our review. If you have a cage that you would like reviewed, uh, go ahead and send it to me at bill at chameleonacademy.com. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to review every cage. What I'm going to be doing is selecting the cages that are going to be a, a very good teaching tool for everybody in the community. And so if you think you have a cage like that, and, and you've really looked into your cage and you said, okay, I've uh, followed as close as I can. And so uh, how does this look? Uh, that, that's probably the kind of cage I'd like to review. All right, everybody, that's it. I'm going to send you off to have a great chameleon day. Thanks for starting it with me. So go take care of yourself. Be excellent to each other. I'll see you next time. <laughs>